Welcome back to BRRockstar.com. We're looking at Rockstar ETL. We're going to look at the data flow job type. So let's enter our time. Leave it at zero runs per day to disable initially. I do want to be notified, so I'm going to put in my email address. Pipeline, let's call this DF test for data flow test. Put my project ID, location, job name. Let's call this DF test job and templates. The location and cloud storage, bugger name and path, excluding the GS colon forward slash forward slash prefix. Of the data flow templates. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the Google provided batch templates. So if you go to Google's documentation, look for products and look for data flow. Uh, if you go down to documentation, just hit a quick start. So if we go to creating and running templates, Google provided templates, got streaming and batch, we're going to look at batch. And we're going to look at the cloud storage text to BigQuery. All right, so this template uh, allows you to read text files in cloud storage and transform them using a JavaScript user-defined function that you provide and output the result to BigQuery. Important, if you reuse an existing BigQuery table, the table will be overwritten. So just note that. Requirements for this pipeline, create a JSON schema, a file that describes your BigQuery schema, Ensure that there's a top level JSON array type BigQuery schema, like so. And that its contents follow the pattern name and type. So that will be this field here the JSON path, the path and cloud storage to the file containing the schema of the BigQuery table being loaded. All right, so I've got one here. We're going to look at this DF batch invoice line schema.json. So it's DF batch invoice line schema.json. And here it is. So we have our top line element here. Top level JSON array, title BigQuery schema, which is here. And we've got our name and our type. So we've got it exactly as required. And then Create a javascript.js file with your user defined function. This applies logic to transform lines of text. Note that your function must return a JSON string. For example, this function splits each line of a CSV file and returns a JSON string after transforming the values. That will be our JavaScript text transform GCS path, the location and cloud storage bucket name and path to the JavaScript function. And we've got one here it's called skip header invoice lines.js. And skip header invoice lines.js. And here it is. The name of the function is transform. So very similar to the splitting the lines creating a new object, assigning each field using the array and index number. And we've got a little bit of extra function going on here. So we're filtering the JSON string to exclude in the invoice ID column, exclude it if it has the actual string value invoice ID. Returning our object. 
that's the path to our JavaScript text transform function. The name of the function to call from our JS file here is transform. Okay. And here we've got our template parameters. So the name of the function we've already done. So this is JavaScript text transform function name. That's here. Uh, JSON path, path to the JSON file defining the BigQuery schema. Stored in cloud storage. So the JSON path is this one. The JavaScript text transform GCS path to the JavaScript file that defines your user defined function. Which is here, JavaScript text transform GCS path. Input file pattern, the path to the text and cloud storage you'd like to process. So in our case, we're gonna read from our same invoice lines table and location and cloud storage. Output table, the BigQuery table name you want to create to store your process data. If you reuse an existing BigQuery table, the table will be overwritten. Okay, so output table will be our projects, dataset, worldwide importers, and DF invoice lines. Over there, BigQuery loading temporary directory, temporary directory for BigQuery loading process. All right, BigQuery loading temporary directory, we've got one there. Then we've got template and temporary location. The location, bucket name and path in cloud storage for temporary data flow staging files. So we're going to use this one. So this is one of our buckets that we have. Subfolder, subfolder. That looks like, like so. That's our buckets, subfolder, subfolder. And uh, let's put in our max workers. And finally, the template, the location and cloud storage, bucket name and path, excluding the GS prefix of the data flow template. Right, so this is the template. So if you go and right click on here, GS data flow dash templates. And what it's saying here is the latest version is kept in the non-dated parent folder, which is latest. So that is down here, which may update with breaking changes. Your production environment should use templates kept in the most recent dated parent folder to prevent these breaking changes from affecting your production workflows. So we're going to use the latest one that is dated and we're going to use the GCS text to BigQuery. So there it is. So we're going to copy that. and insert it there. And now we've completed all of the fields required in order to run our Dataflow job. So now we can set the appropriate time and enter a non-zero positive number of runs per day to get the job to run. And we can click save to save our job step. And then we can go monitor our emails for notifications because I've inserted my email address and our stack driver logging. 
here we can see a job state pending notification. So this is our data flow job tab, which is step one of our DF test pipeline. So what we can also do is go to our Dataflow console, refresh, and we can see we've got our DF test job, and our email alerts us to this job ID here, which corresponds to this job ID over here. And what we can do is go in to the data flow job and monitor the progress. It's also convenient is to look at the pipeline options and to see various parameter values, temp location, template location, which is where we found our template file, project, staging location, region, JSON path, output table, input file pattern, JavaScript, text transform GCS path and JavaScript text transform function name. And it looks like this job has completed. Still waiting for it, uh, even though these steps seem to have all succeeded, waiting for the job status to reflect that. If we go to our stack driver logging, you can see that Getting our DF test pipeline, starting run of step one. Authorized to rerun. Here's our data flow parameters. These are all our different parameter values, which are exactly the same as per our data flow job from the console. And we've got a 200 OK response code. We've got our job ID. So what we can do is go in and uh, disable our job from running, doing the value to zero runs per day. And saving that. And there we go, it's reflecting as succeeded now. And then if we check our email, we've got a success email. Show us that our data flow test job, our DFTS pipeline has succeeded. And if we go into BigQuery, recall that we specified our output table to be in the Worldwide Importers datasets and called DF Invoice Lines. So we've got our Worldwide Importers datasets. We just need to refresh our BigQuery web console. And there is our table, DF invoice lines. And here it is. And we've got some data in there. So it all looks good. Job is run in the console. It's populated our BigQuery table. We've disabled it here so it doesn't have to run again. And finally, we can see the pipeline finishes. Finish step one, completed pipeline, DF test.
project. All pipelines completed, you be our rock star. So, that is how we run a Google provided GCS text to BigQuery Dataflow job on Rockstar ETL. Yeah.